This topic is going to show you how to find the vertex of a parabola algebraically. Um, we want to start with an equation for a parabola uh, that's in standard form. And I hate to throw this at you right away, but what does standard form look like? It looks like this. ax squared plus bx plus c either equals y or equals zero, one or the other. Um, we've seen this before if you've looked at parabolas or quadratics. Um, the reason why we need to know this is we need to recognize that these letters have specific spots. The A value is always in front of the X squared, the B value is always in front of the X, and the C value is the guy that has no X at all. Um, so once you recognize these, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier to con um, figure out what the vertex um, ordered pair is for a parabola. So let's just get to it. Um, let's say that we have the equation Y equals... Um, We'll just do x squared plus 4x minus 3. So to find the x value, you notice that a vertex is always an ordered pair. We need an x and we need a y. We always start by finding the x because it's the easier one. Um, to find the x value, we take the opposite of whatever the b value is and we divide it by 2 times a. So that negative sign, a lot of people want to call it negative, it's the opposite of b. So write that down in your notes. If you start calling it the negative, and then B's negative, then you get all confused, so it's the opposite of B. The same thing happens when you get to a quadratic formula. If you haven't seen that yet, it's the same deal. There's a negative sign, then a B. And it means take the opposite of B. All right, so go back to our equation, x squared plus 4x minus 3. Our A value is 1. It's that invisible 1 that's in front of the x squared. Our B value is 4 and our c value is negative 3. Don't forget the negative signs attached. So when we get our x value, it's the opposite of b, so it's going to be negative 4, because it's the opposite of positive 4, over 2 times 1, which is our a value. So in other words, we're doing negative 4 over 2, which gives us negative 2. We're halfway there. Once you get your x value, the easiest way to get your y value is to go back to your equation. Notice how it says y equals all this gobbledygook? Well, that's exactly how you're going to find it. Y equals, well, what's the x value that we know? It's 2. So wherever we see an x, we're going to plug in, oh, it's a negative 2. We're going to plug in a negative 2. Plus 4 times negative 2 minus 3. And now it's just order of operations. If you get real ugly numbers and your teacher's okay with it, just grab a calculator and run it through. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And we go from left to right and adding 4 plus negative 8 is negative 4. And then finally, negative 4 minus 3 gives us negative 7. So there you go. We want to express our vertex, and we know that it happens when x is negative 2 and y is negative 7. That's how you get the vertex of a parabola. Let's try another example. And then on our third one, we will uh, I will have you try to do it on your own and see how that works. Okay, I'm just going to put up here x equals the opposite of b over 2a. Alright, y equals 2x squared minus 8x minus 1. Okay, always start off with your a's, your b's, and your c's. That actually comes handy for a lot of algebraic stuff with the quadratics. Our a value is 2. Our b value isn't just 8, it's negative 8. Like I said, those signs in front of numbers are married to them. Our C value is negative 1. We really don't need C for this, but that's okay. It's a good habit to get into. All right, our X value of the vertex is going to be the opposite of B over 2A. Now, this is a case where our B is negative 8, so it's the opposite of negative 8, positive 8. Over 2 times, our A value is 2. If for some reason you're um, using a calculator for this, some people do, they just tend to use calculators more than they need to. Um, be careful how you type it in, because if you just type it in as 8 divided by 2 times 2, it's going to give you the wrong answer. It's going to do this, 8 divided by 2 is 4, times 2, which gives you 8. What you really need to do is tell the calculator to do this. Put those 2's in parentheses, because then you actually have 8 divided by 4, which is 2, and that's the correct answer. So notice how far off we are here. Um, be really careful with that. Again, sometimes using the calculator overly much is, makes it so easy to make mistakes. But we're dividing by this entire thing, which is why we need to tell the calculator that and use parentheses.
All right, so we have our x value. It's positive 2. Now I'm going back to our original equation that they gave us, the 2x squared minus 8x minus 1. Wherever I see an x, I'm going to put in a, um, a positive 2. So, and then I'm just going to apply the order of operations. Minus 8 times 2. Let me scroll up a little bit because I'm a little crowded. All right, so order of operations says exponents first. So 2 squared becomes 4. Again, I'm baby stepping just to really like reemphasize things. Uh, all right, now I can multiply. 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. And again, I reset like I'm a typewriter. I start from left to right again. 8 minus 16 is negative 8. And then finally, negative 8 minus 1 gives us negative 9. So the vertex happens when x is 2 and y is negative 9. All right, let's try one more. This is the one where if you haven't done this already and you're feeling confident, I want you to write down the problem, hit the pause button, work it out, and then hit play and see if you get the same thing. Okay, this time our equation is going to be y equals, we'll do negative 3x squared plus, um, I don't know, 6x minus 5. All right, if you want to hit the pause button, go ahead. So a equals negative 3, b equals 6, c equals negative 5. To get the x value, it's the opposite of b over 2a. So the opposite of 6 is negative 6 divided by 2 times negative 3. Negative 6 over negative 6, hey, we get a positive 1. To get our y value, we just plug in a positive 1 wherever we see it. Squared plus 6 times 1. Follow the order of operations. 1 squared is 1. Now we need to do some multiplication. Negative 3 plus 6. Those multiplications are pretty darn easy. Negative 3 plus 6 is going to be positive 3. Positive 3 minus 5 gives us negative 2. So our vertex happens at 1, negative 2. There you go. I hope you get the same answer. If you have any issues or um, things that you didn't quite get or that I didn't, didn't explain well enough, come find me and I'll help you out with that. Thanks.